Thanks, Sally. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, we, this actually looks a bit like blind dates, so if you think you're in the wrong room, <laughs> we're actually talking about financial well-being. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a bit of background initially, um, but does anyone, does anyone know, we're quite interactive as well, this is going to be more of a chat and obviously nothing about really us and Wavestream and much more about um, NHS Frimley and how they think about well-being strategies and especially sort of financial well-being. Has, does anyone know what income streaming is? Okay, good, you're in the right place. That's what, let me educate <laughs> you. Um, so in, it's, it's, it basically, it's a new technology emerging that will allow any employee of a company to have access to their earnings as they earn them. So no form of debt or credit, merely allowing people or giving staff liquidity back between pay cycles uh, with the real um, you know, pre re remit that they don't go into debt, they don't go, have to incur overdraft fees, credit card debt, or the worst thing in anyone's life is to take a payday loan. And giving that cash flow back to staff um, is something that a lot of companies are looking at, especially when you have a lot of shift workers, a lot of people on you know, lower incomes. Can you give them that liquidity back and help them get through pay cycles? Um, and it's all done really through contracting with a business and allowing them, their staff to have access to an app to enable them to do that. Um, so my name is uh, Peter. I'm the co-founder of a company called Wagestream, which is an income streaming platform. So I'm not biased at all in this, so I'm going to shut up in a minute and really <laughs> focus on um, NHS Frimley and what they've done and how they think about things. Um, so I guess the best thing to do is probably give you guys just do a quick introduction on who you are and, and what you do, and then obviously we'll start. Yeah. So this is working. Hi, everyone. Um, Saf Angelo, HR Program Manager for, of course, NHS Frimley. Um, and Michael Ellis, Assistant Director of HR at Frimley. Great. So NHS Frimley is a, is a large trust. It's about 11,000 workers. And you guys obviously are, you know, you're, un, you're under a, a very, I guess I should say a very challenging environment in terms of, you know, a huge amount of staff. Um, you know, we all hear about the NHS every day being used as a political football on the news. There's probably never a news article. In, in the top five pages of every paper, there'll be some NHS article, whether there's an election going on or not. Um, so obviously, we, I think everyone appreciates you, you guys have a lot of challenges in terms of just day to day. Um, and also, you know, how, you know, it'd be great just to give everyone a bit of an overview of like, how do you guys actually get through a day? Um, to, bearing in mind all the pressures that happen to you and, and how do you think about like strategically looking after staff for implementing well-being um, solutions. But just give people a bit of like a day in the life if, 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 if you want. I mean, don't know if, is anyone here from the NHS or anyone from healthcare? Okay, good. This will be good. Let, let him know. I think lots of um, coffee is the one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so it, it changes so um, frequently. I think so. Um, uh, uh, my remit covers a lot of recruitment, so um, a lot of what we do is focused on recruitment planning, resource planning. We're doing some um, a lot of capital development at the moment, so we're actually building a new hospital. Um, so part of that at the moment is working on workforce plans around that and, and the kind of the new staff that we're going to need. Um, see all over the news that there's there's never enough of anything in, for the NHS in terms of staffing so um, we're doing a lot of work on things like international recruitment um, our kind of attraction campaigns all that sort of thing um, uh, my room also covers a lot of um, our HR system stuff so um, looking at stuff like this looking at all of our well-being and staff benefits kind of offering um, we're doing a lot at the moment around retention and well-being and kind of trying to improve that so we recruit something like 16 1700 people a year into the organization we lose as many, so actually what we need to do now is a lot of, we're focusing a lot more on trying to keep them, because um, actually it's really hard work mm -hmm. recruiting that many people a year. Um, okay, great, yeah. and I know that, you know, obviously with some staff striking or, or just trying to fill rotors, I know, Saf, you've been out there portering yes. as well, and you, you've got this, the, the chairman and the CEO of the trust to do that as well, so this is like, uh, this is, that's extreme scheduling, I guess, and ex extreme resourcing, but um, we know, and you guys are well aware, that the NHS, so the NHS workers are the most prolific users of payday loans, and that's probably down to the size of the organisation, 1.3 million plus employees. Like, when you guys think about financial well-being, what do you think about, and do you have, do you have many real life <coughs> cases with workers that you guys have to deal with on a weekly, monthly basis? So I think we've got a very robust health and wellbeing strategy at Frimley, <coughs> so the three usual trends, the, f the physical wellbeing, um, mental wellbeing, and also financial. Um, and where we kind of partnered with Wagestream was with the results that was given to us from the staff survey. It was quite evident that there were recurring themes and trends coming up with what employees were mentioning on the staff survey. 
Um, so that kind of led us towards uh, conducting, uh, doing some market intelligence and doing some due diligence in terms of who could we potentially partner with uh, to offer this solution to staff. And the common thing which was arising was about um, bank work and getting paid weekly and um, you know, having a more innovative solution towards pay as opposed to it just being at the last Thursday of the month and so forth. So that's what the key driver was for us. And I think what one of the most important USPs uh, that WageStream offered and it, it was important for us in terms of our trust values and strategy was it's not a payday loan and it's not a overdraft so that you kind of go into some form of debt or you know 99.9% .9 APR or whatever it is. It's access to your money as and when you want it. Um, so for us, that was very important. No, that's great. And I know, Michael, you said, you know, because a lot of people look at this type of model and it's, it's, it's new technology really that's allowed us to, you know, access workforce management data, which is held with employer and obviously understand, uh, you know, every minute of every day how much people earn. But the natural uh, question sometimes is, well, why don't you just pay more frequently? Have you guys, did you look at that as an option, knowing yeah. that potentially financial wellness, make more frequent pay may be helpful to staff. What do you, do you ever look at that? Definitely. Um, so, yeah, uh, as I've mentioned, we, the, the sort of request for weekly pay came up quite a lot through various things like our, our annual staff survey and other kind of just informal routes. But um, uh, it's always something we've been a little bit reluctant to do just as a, it's hard work, isn't it? It's, it's, it's you know, effectively moving from running one payroll a month to five or six to do that. Um, so we did. We, 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 we looked at this and, and you know, I actually heard through. Uh, we came across WageStream by chance, I suppose. One of uh, sort of one of the competitors contacted us, and we kind of then we thought, oh, this looks interesting. Let's explore this a bit further. This was at the same sort of time we were being asked to do weekly pay more frequent, and we know that a lot of people who work additional shifts do it because they want that money. And you know, people working, you know, on the traditional model, if people do shifts now, they're probably not going to get paid those until the end of January. So actually, for people wanting more money for Christmas, that sort of thing actually just doesn't work. Um, so. Yeah, we looked at WageStream and, and that, that gave that, that ability for staff to take that, their earnings as soon as they earn them. So as soon as someone's worked that sh additional shift, they know yeah. the very next day they can then draw that down and, and have that straight into their bank account. Um, and comparing that against the other options of running a more kind of traditional weekly or more frequent payroll cycle, actually it was a, that's a very much more expensive, much more resource-intensive resource model for us to do, something our payroll manager hated the idea of as well and threatened to resign every time we talked about it. So, <laughs> you know, um, depending on how, how you feel about him, he, you know, that may or may not have been a bad thing. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, this, this basically offered us a, a, an option of, of, you know, ticking that box of actually giving people more frequent pay and actually more frequently than they were asking for. Um, and opened it up to something that anybody and everybody could use as, a, as an optional benefit rather mm. than something like weekly pay, which would almost be a, well, you're either in or out, you haven't really got a choice to do mm. it. Um, it gives people that flexibility to kind of take their money out <laughs> and when they want it, if they should need it. No, that's great. And I, I mean, you know, this is a new and innovative space. And I guess I could say uh, that, that, you know, people don't naturally think of the NHS as being an innovative sort of organisation, it is hard to get things done. And you guys have done some incredibly in innovative things around just people's, you know, the employees' well-being in general. Like, and when you thought about this as a solution, how were you actually able to get it done and you did it very quickly and you made your decisions? This is, this is pretty impressive. So how did, how did you actually manage to get the organisation to buy into that, albeit you guys obviously lead what you're doing? Um, I mean, we, we've been having those conversations around pay frequencies for a little while and we'd, we, we'd sort of been exploring this and looking at... Uh, you know, other similar providers. Um, actually, at the point we kind of came to the decision we were going to progress with this, we, we did this little sort of thing about looking at, you know, basically this versus running a, a more frequent payroll. Actually, just on a pure financial basis, it made sense. Um, and took that through our exec team. They were more, you know, perfectly happy to sign off on that basis. Um, and on the backdrop of all our other retention work, actually, it just fit, it fitted with kind of what we were doing currently. Um, so, I mean, we... we had that signed off through our exact team in middle of August. Staff joined the organisation at the beginning of September, and I said, "We are launching this on the first of October. Off you go." So he so gave him no choice. Basically, he had no choice. He had four weeks, yeah, yeah, um, and we did. Yeah. So um, I mean, oh, yeah, it's the NHS. There's loads of red tape, but actually, as a as something new, that made it a little bit difficult in terms of getting through things like procurement and stuff, because you know, actually, don't there's not really much to compare against. There isn't, you know, things like procurement frameworks and all the rest of it that. Uh, you normally have to go through and quite often that'll take months um, so a lot of that was kind of selling that on the basis this yeah. is kind of new it's a pilot initially it's, we're trying something out and and actually that helped us get it through a lot of that kind of red tape quite quickly um, and actually the return on investment 
for, for doing it you know, within the year and in terms of our turnover, should, should, it should more than pay for itself. No, no, no that's great. And I think you know, when you look at you know, everything, any wellness strategy really is about staff engagement and how you increase staff engagement and the outputs of that mm. would be you know, less people leave the organisation, more people are more productive, less absenteeism, all those types of things that come from better staff yeah. engagement. And Saf, when you look at like, financial wellness as a strategy or any wellness strategy really, like, what are the outcomes you're actually looking for in the business? Because no, you're never going to do anything that you don't see there's going to be a positive outcome. So what do you, what do you think the outcomes are? And I know it's, it's early days, but what, what's the sort of strategy around that or the incentive to do something like this? I think that's a good question, Peter. But I think, firstly, I think in terms of sickness absence, I think it would be less presenteeism, increase in outputs and productivity. Um, so hopefully that is something that we're moving towards. It's very early days because, as I shared with you all today, we uh, implemented Wagestream on the 1st of October. And just adding on from what Michael said, I started in the beginning of September. And I, w I now look back at it and think, how on God's earth did that happen in four weeks? It's unheard of. Um, for those working public or private sector, we all experience information governance, we all experience internal communications, and we all experience procurement delays and so forth as well. But it moved at the speed of light and at pace. Um, so four weeks to, to implement is quite a, a very tight timescale, but it happened. So, um, so that was good. But going back to your question, Peter, it, 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 yeah, I think it will be an increase in productivity, sickness absence, and we, um, again, we look at the kind of data that comes through certainly from Frimley, and when we're looking at sickness absence, it's kind of the usual trends that are emerging, and it seems to be moving more towards mental and financial well-being as opposed to what it was once upon a time ago, and it used to be physical well-being. Um, and when you're looking at the clinical codes, that's certainly the trend that's emerging. So this is what, one of the reasons why also we thought we need to put some sort of intervention or, or measure in place. I think something like 20% of our sickness absence is stress-related and, and certainly a significant proportion of that will be down to financial stress. Yeah. And that doesn't, I suppose, cover where people are going through financial stress and that impacting them at work as well because people will be thinking about that and that will be kind of playing on their mind all throughout the day. So yeah. that, that impact on productivity is potentially huge. Great. And, and is anyone here today looking at... Um, you know, it, as in wellness strategies around mental well-being or financial well-being, you guys, is anyone actively looking at these types of things for the business? Because um, I know one of the challenges, and we work with, with quite a few different companies, is actually once you put something in place or have something live, is actually communicating it and making sure at least staff are aware of it. Many of these wellness solutions are voluntary, so people can choose whether or not to, to use them, and that's fine, but actually, you know, it's actually getting people to understand they're available, which is always one of the, the major challenges, I guess. So how do you guys... How do you guys look at that type of thing, and, and what have you deployed any strategies that work? I know, you know, with GDPR, sometimes it's harder to do these things than you than you would imagine. Yeah, I mean, we, I think, uh, you know, ideally we would have loved to just sign everyone up automatically and say, "This is here you go." But as you say, GDPR and all things kind of make that quite difficult. Um, uh, yes, yeah, I think you had a, 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 a bit of a nightmare with Commons, is fair to say. Yeah, we, we experience a lot of challenges of our um, internal communications. Um, and again, I think it's mainly because we were moving at pace. So, of course, their timelines weren't kind of in sync with our timelines in terms of launch and implementation. Um, how we've kind of gone, um, not around that, but how we, what we found quite effective in terms of marketing is the uh, direct marketing approach. So, believe it or not, I'm, and I'm surprised by this, but leaflets and flyers and direct marketing to actually going into sort of hospital breakout areas, going into restaurants, going into staff breakout rooms and so forth, and literally just handing out leaflets with QR codes on there to say, here's Wagestream, here's our product, and so forth, and it works. And I, I thought we moved away from this about 10 to 12 years ago, because, <laughs> you know, the world, everyone talks to you about digital, in inverted commas, and, you know, digital concepts, and Instagrams, and Facebooks, and LinkedIn's, and, you know, everyone talks about these social media platforms, but... Honestly, the, um, the leaflets seem to have been very, very successful, direct great. marketing. That's great. And I think when you look at, again, these types, of, and you know, we're one of a, a number of different companies doing this type of thing, but when you look at you know, financial well-being in, in, in particular, because this is what this session is about, what type of behaviours do you want to start seeing with staff and what sort of positive outcomes are you looking for? And I know it's early days, but I, and I know as an NHS trust and a large one, you guys are quite unique in terms of a you know, huge amount of shifts and rotors and different staff workers and different... I mean, I, mean, I can't even get my head around how, how you manage all that, but what, what, you know, what sort of outcomes are you guys looking for in, in, you know, from now and, and in the future? I, I think, I think um, a, a more um, harmonious workforce, but importantly, giving our employees the options to be able to get paid as and when they need. So 
I think I mentioned um, a few questions ago about it not being a payday loan, but also it's important to mention that life occurs and life happens for many people. We're obviously very, you know, coming up to a very close road up to Christmas. Someone's car's broken down, your tyres need to be changed, your boiler's packed up, your washing machine's gone. Life happens, all of those things occur. Um, and they're not necessarily things that you budget or plan for, because they're obviously things that happen in an emergency. So um, it, it's great to be able to give our staff and our employees a, 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 an alternative, compelling, a compelling alternative, um, as opposed to it rather just for actually go and contact a payday loan or go and contact, go and, you know, rack up your credit card or whatever it would be. So I think it's really important to have that option for staff. So it's, we're empowering our employees, employees by giving them this, um, this financial solution. Great. Are you, I've got there's some questions behind me. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so so um, I guess the, the, the question here about kind of balancing that with education for employees in terms of how <laughs> good financial management is in yeah. place. Have you kind of done much in that area yeah, alongside so, this? Um, actually, Waysham itself includes some elements of education as part of the platform. Um, so actually, even if you don't use the streaming, there's, 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 there's articles and things through there that people can, can use, and it is some of that simple thing, how to budget, how to read a payslip, how to deal with that sort of thing. Um, uh, separately to that, we also have things, uh, we also have an employee assistance program, so that includes a route for people to actually have that kind of counselling route to, um, for when they've got issues that they need to talk to people about. We're also looking at a range of other kind of ed more broader sort of mental and financial well-being offering. So we are looking at more in, in detailed financial education as well. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of the, and it's it's not something for everyone. I think you know, and as Saf mentioned, people are going to have different things at different points in their life. So it's trying to provide something that kind of gives everyone that access at and when they may need it. And it's not something. It's there as an optional thing. It's not for us to try and force it at people because it's quite a private thing. And actually, people don't want to come and talk to, you know, people are reluctant to come talk to their manager or to their HR about something like it. So something like this actually is something that's just there. And if people want to use it, they can. They don't, we don't necessarily have to know that people are have, going through financial difficulty and that sort of thing. So it avoids that process of people having to come to payroll and say, actually, I'm really struggling. Can I have some, an advance on pay? You know, they can just go straight and use that. And we, we you know, essentially, we're none the wiser. Yeah. I, I totally share that because we have similar things that um, how do you measure success because as you say in the GDPR world yeah. you don't know individually what people are engaging so yeah. have you got for us uh, yeah. yeah I mean for us um, it's um, it's going to be looking at our turnover our retention rates um, so as I mentioned we lose something like 1600 people a year to, so it's about 13% turnover for us um, so actually seeing a drop in that and you know, there's all sorts of measures on how you measure what turnover costs and things on recruitment costs or, or the cost of training up people, etc. But um, for us, something like, you know, we, if we, our turnover drops by 1%, that's 100 less people leaving. That's 100 less doctors and nurses that we've got to recruit, so that's huge. Um, also things like how many additional shifts people work, so actually hoping that, that we see an uptake and things yeah. like that. Um, and I think it's fair to say in our organisation, not getting too hung up in the measurement, you, the, a direct line of sight is very, very yeah. difficult in this area, isn't it? But you know it's going back to its purpose. You know it's the right thing to be doing for your employees. So uh, thank you, everyone, for your engagement. Thank you um, for sharing all of your knowledge and experience. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Ev. Thank, thank you. you. And you're hanging around if there's questions. Yeah, if there's food, yes. If there's food, <laughs> yeah. Feed them food. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.